of what? The power of thanksgiving. Right. We've covered and we've gone a distance in this, some distance in this. But let's go back to the, the base scripture or the foundational scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. In everything, in everything, give thanks for why? This is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Now, I've shared quite a bit on this, but I want to re reiterate a few things. Number one, how can I thank God when things have not gone the way I desired? How can I thank God in the loss? How can I thank God when I've gone through this painful experience? How? How can I do it? If you don't know your God, you cannot trust your God. When you don't trust your God, you cannot have faith in your God. This walk in the Lord is a walk of faith. Let me, let me say this. You cannot have faith in somebody that you do not know. Is that right? You cannot have faith in somebody that you do not know. The more you know the person, the more you trust the person, or the less you trust the person, based on the character of the person. It is your personal experience with the person that develops your trust or distrust in that person. Is that right? If somebody keeps telling you that they'll do something, they're good friends, they, their intentions are great, but every time they say they will do something and they never show up and they never do it, he's still your friend, but you don't trust him. Is that right? So your experience and intimacy with God determines the level of faith that you are at, that you can operate on. So you cannot say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, and think that you have faith. No, you don't have faith. You're trying to have faith. You're trying to drum up something that is not there. You're trying to make yourself believe when you cannot believe because you don't know the person. If I know the person, and I know his character, I know his dealings, then I will understand, yes, this person that I believe, I, 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 mean, I know I can trust him. This is why you need to read the Bible. Because the Bible is what gives you the what? The knowledge and understanding of who God is. What is Logos? Logos is the intentions of God. Logos is the, are the thoughts of God. Logos is the heart of God. Logos is not just the printed word there. The printed word that you carry in your hands is an expression of God's intents and God's thoughts and God's heart. So if you don't read your Bible, you will have your own image about God in your heart which has been framed through religious experiences of others or what you've heard others tell you. But if you read your Bible and the Holy Spirit is teaching you and you're sitting under anointed teaching, then you're, you'll be enlightened to have a better understanding of who God is. See, people have lopsided ideas of God. Some people that are totally negligent about the Old Testament and they keep focusing and saying, only read the New Testament. We're not in the Old Covenant. We don't have to do anything with it. We only are in the New Testament. So the New Testament talks more about love, right? God is love. God is a forgiving God. God is a merciful God. God is a God of grace. And true it is. But it doesn't so much talk about the judgment of God. But if you read the Old Testament, you'll think that God is a hard, cruel person. Is that right? But see, this is the same God is like a coin on two with two different sides. But it's the same God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you really want to know God, you, you cannot neglect reading the Old Testament and also reading the New Testament. So that gives you a wholesome idea of who God is and how God deals with His people. See, because people are negligent about the Old Testament, today we have so many progressive, so-called progressive churches that don't believe like the Bible teaches about God. They're very liberal in their theology. And there are people who, who believe today, calling themselves Christian, that they, they said there is no hell. 
I don't know where they get all this from because they don't read their Bibles. So if I want to know, if I want to grow in faith, I cannot do it. I cannot grow in faith if I don't know who God is. And it's not enough just to know Him in my head. I have to experience Him. That's why the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hey, David said the Lord is good. I believe him. But do I have an experience? If you say no, well, you don't really know God. You know about God, but you have not had an experience with God. But if I have to grow in my faith and believe that God will answer my prayers, then I need to have an experience where I prayed and God has answered my prayers. Somebody talk to me this morning. See, so it's important for us to understand that we need a deep, intimate fellowship and relationship with God. You cannot grow in faith without knowing God. Amen? Well, from this, if I'm going through a hard time, if I'm going through a difficult challenge, I'm going, if I'm going through the waters, if I'm going through the fire, the natural man responds very negatively and says, where is God? Why is he doing this? What is the purpose of all this? And we begin to question God because we have never truly understood the heart of God. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 verse 28, all things work together for good those who are called according to his purpose to those who love him and to those who are called according to his purpose so do you believe that you have been called according to his purpose do you believe that you are in the purpose of god come on talk to me somebody that's why you need to understand you cannot determine your destiny i want to be this i want to go there i want to marry this person hang on you have a purpose that God has already determined. It's very strange. You know, we read about these great prophets. We say, my God, I wish I was used like them. How would you like if God told you to sleep only on one side for one year? Is that in your Bible? How would you like if God said, go find a prostitute and marry her? How well should you know God to be able to take those kind of instructions? If I am in the purpose of God, that means I am in the hand of God. He's molding me into something. That's the that's a faith. That's a confidence I have. I am not a nobody. I'm not what the world says I am. I don't care what others say about me. I know this. I have been placed on this planet by Him for His purpose to be fulfilled. I am in God's purpose. That's the first thing that you need to know. You don't have to struggle to survive. You are a child of God. You are in God's purpose. If you're still alive and breathing and in good health, thank God for that because His purpose with you is not over. It's not over. All things, good, bad, ugly. All things work together for good. Hallelujah. That means some negative, inexplainable experiences which make no sense to you are also working for your good. Because I'm in His purpose and I love God. Two, two things that qualify. Do you love God and do you believe you're in His purpose? If you do, then rejoice no matter where you are right now and what you're experiencing because God has not forgotten you. And he says, all things work together for good. That means God can turn everything around to make it good for you. 
Hallelujah to Jesus. Besides this, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, the Christian Standard Bible, please, CSB. If you have that, otherwise I will read it from here. CSB. For I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plans for your welfare, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. Do you believe him? I said, do you believe him? I said, do you believe him? He says, my plans for you are for welfare, for good, not for disaster. Then why am I in this situation? Why am I in this painful experience? Why is it that I've been struggling to be healed for so long? Why is it this? Why, why, why? Hey, wait. What did he say? My plans are for your welfare, not for your disaster. Even what seems like a disaster now is going to be turned into good for you. Yeah. Stay put. Don't try to wriggle out of it in your own strength. Let him handle the situation and turn everything around. But you stay strong in the Lord. Be faithful to him. Be faithful in your prayer life. Be faithful in what God has entrusted you with. And wait for him to promote you. Wait for him to elevate you. Wait for him to deliver you. Wait, because there is a purpose. Because in that situation, in that heat, in that fire, he is molding you. Amen. We have to understand that not only in good times, but also in times that are bad. In our experience, God is with us. God is with us. Amen. He is the one that knows the end from the beginning. Be patient. Don't rush. God is never in a rush. There is a scripture for God. I mean, paraphrasing it, it says, He that hasteth will sin. Is that right? There is some, I, I forget the reference. Don't be in a haste to do anything. Oh, I got to make the decision. No, you don't have to. Just wait. Wait until that confidence comes inside you and it's confirmed. God is constantly working and shaping and molding each one of us to fulfill our destiny. It's a process. Listen, the present version of you cannot handle the position and destiny he has for you. The present version of you cannot handle the position and destiny he has for you. The version of you that can handle the position has to be developed. So he puts you through situations and circumstances that are beyond you and sometimes it makes you wonder if God has abandoned you, forsaken you, or forgotten you. But remember, he hasn't. He's busy shaping and molding you to become that version. Why do I have to go this, through this painful experience? Why, did that, why do I have to fail in this situation? Why does everybody misunderstand me? I don't know. But stay put in the hands of God. He's the potter. He's shaping that vessel. He's, he's working on the pottery. He's got something in his mind. One piece of pottery does not have to be the same as the next one. It's going to be different. But the potter knows this is the purpose that I'm going to use this piece of clay to produce. See, it could be from the same batch of clay. One part of it he pulls out, and so he makes that into a beautiful jar. The next one he makes, he takes from the same piece of clay, that, uh, that portion of clay, and he shapes it into a beautiful vase. Your same family. One is a doctor, one is an engineer, one is a preacher. You don't have to be the same. Why? I don't know. Because he has a plan for your life. If the preacher tries to become a doctor... It's going to kill a lot of people. (laughs) 
And if the doctor tries to become a preacher, he's going to lead a lot of people astray. No. There is a plan that God has for you. So God comes to Joseph and says, Joseph, here is the dream. Your mom, your dad, all your brothers are going to bow before you. You're going to be the leader. You are going to be a leader. Wow, what a prophecy. What a dream. Don't try to fulfill the dream in your own strength. And don't share every dream with everybody. Not everybody will be excited like you are because they will become jealous. These are some things we need to understand. You cannot share everything with everybody. Don't throw pearls before pigs. Is that right? Yeah, you got to be careful. Okay. Psalm 105, please. Verse 17. Psalm 105, verse 17. Oh. We got to do something about this service, man. I, I get started and it says time up. I, I don't know what to do. No, because, you know, because it'll disrupt the second service, and I don't want to do that. We got, I'll really pray and make some major changes. We got to do something. I, I'm just getting warmed up now, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, let me take a few minutes today, and we'll go from there. 105 verse 17, let's read that. He sent a man before them. Who sent? Come on. He sent a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant. Wait, 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 wait. He never told that in the dream, did he? Did he say, I'm going to re displace you from your parents? Did he say, you're going to become a servant? No. All he said was, listen, this is how God works. He gives you a picture at the end picture. He doesn't tell you the process. Because you'll get discouraged. He said, hey, listen guys, that land, can you see, flowing with milk and honey? That's yours. Oh, praise God. But he never said there are giants there. He never told them that they have to go to the wilderness. He never told them there are going to be scorpions and snakes and wild beasts in, that, in the area that they're going to walk through. And he never told them that they will actually have to cross a Red Sea. All he said was, there, can you see that? That's yours. <laughs> and we all get excited. And we say, praise God, we dance, we rejoice, we clap our hands and we do all that. And then the next thing we know is, oh, I didn't think this is how God will lead me. <laughs> This is why you need to read the Bible. Why? Then you will understand and say, you'll correlate. Oh, oh, okay, Lord, I don't, I, see, what happened was, every time they faced the problem or the challenge, they said, I don't think God is able to take us there. So God is giving us a picture. We, are, we really have an advantage because we're not like them. We have something to fall back on. We saw what happened. They were given the promise, but to reach the promise, they have to go through what? The desert. They have many challenges. So as the challenges come, and it seems like it's impossible, it could never happen, is when you have to stand up and say, it will happen. I don't know how. I'm not going to re recoil. I'm not going to argue with God. I'm not going to disbelieve God. I'm going to believe God in the pit. God sent him. Who sent him? God. To where? To become a slave. How does that, listen, it's so hard for your brain to wrap around this. God said I will be a leader, and now he sends me to be a servant. You will preach, you will be like the Billy Graham of this generation. Oh, so the next day you think you'll be on a platform and stadiums will be filled. You will be a prophet of so and so stature. Really? And you think from next day you'll prophesy on everybody. <laughs> this is the pitfall. You don't understand. God is giving you the picture of the, of the end result. He's giving you a picture of the future. But he's not showing you what will happen. He's not telling you everything about the process. So through the study of the word, we understand that God always takes us through a process to develop me to become the version that needs to become to be able to occupy that place. I cannot possess and rule and reign with the mind of a slave. 
There has to be a transformation. And God had to put them through this wilderness experience, facing giants that were twice or three times their size, to show them what? It's not by might. It's not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. To show them and to teach them, even though you're in the wilderness, there is hardly any water, there is hardly any food. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Where it seemed like they're going to die of thirst, and there was no water anywhere, God wanted to show them He's a God of miracles, that He can produce water out of a rock. No digging. No bore well. Out of a rock. This is why you need to read your Bible. You and I will face these challenges which are inexplainable. We don't understand why these have to happen. But there is one purpose. God is focused on molding me and shaping me and making me into the version that can handle the destiny He has for me. Because if I don't change and the process is not complete, when I get there, it will be disaster. Verse 16, 17, 18 please, verse 18. He sent them, and uh, okay, whose feet were hurt with fetters and was laid in iron. Let me read that from another version. It reads from NIV, it says this. They bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was put in prison, in, put in irons. Whoa, whoa. Lord, you said I'll be a leader. Here I am like a convict. A criminal. Who would ever in their wildest dreams ever think that a man who has been incarcerated with his feet in stock and his neck in iron ever become a leader of a nation? God sees the end picture. In everything, give thanks. The way you are processed. The way you're shaped by God is by yielding. How do I yield to God? By giving thanks. Lord, I know you're not making a mistake. I know you're working on me. I know you're shaping me. I know you're molding me because you have a plan for my life. Listen to me, please, everybody. The plan that God has for you is not that you can become retire from the government. Have one house, two cars, three children in America, two in Australia. I'm settled for life. That is not what we are created for. That is the deception people live in. No, 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 no. You have a purpose that you have to fulfill. There is a reason why you're alive. Oh, my son. And they boast about their son. Oh, my daughter. And they boast about their daughter. This is, she's there. She's this. She's that. Well, praise God for all that. But what about your own life? What have you done for God? What purpose have you fulfilled? Only bearing children? Animals can do that. Is that right? Come on. The reason you're not an animal is because God has a plan for your life. And that is not that I make myself comfortable in life. That I become wealthy for myself. And I have three cars or four cars and one jet and whatever, you know. And I'm planning now. My next dream is I got to go into space with Elon Musk's <laughs> spacecraft. People are dreaming, right? They're putting millions away so they can go on a flight. For what? You think you'll find God there? I'm not making fun of that. I mean, some people like that. They, you can enjoy that. I'm saying, that should not be the goal of your life, is what I'm saying. I'm not making fun of flying into the space or what Elon Musk is doing or whatever. No, I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm saying, that should not be the reason why you're alive. There is a greater purpose that God has for you and for me that we are alive still today. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, whose feet they hurt in fetters and laid in iron, 
Now, verse 19. Till he, till what? Till he, what he foretold came to pass. Till the word of the Lord proved him to be true. Hallelujah. Don't try to cut that time down. Have you ever seen a pregnant woman saying, Well, praise God, I'm pregnant. I'm, they scanned and they said, It's a baby boy. I can't wait to see. In the fourth month, I'm going to deliver. <laughs> and you go and they get some surgery done and you deliver in the fourth month. What happens? You're never going to have that child. There is a time in the process. Don't try to short circuit that. Don't try to short change. Wait until God finishes upon you. And he was there in fetters and in iron until the time the word came. He's elect. He's selected. He's the one that's going to deliver his people of Israel. Jacob and all the brothers. But today, he's in prison. How can I thank God? Because I know all things are working together for good for me. Why am I going through this painful experience? Lord, it's so hard. It's so heavy, but Lord, I broken on the inside, Lord. But I thank you. God, give me the strength to withstand this. But I will never blame you. I will never question you. I know your plans will be fulfilled in my life. I'm not saying you have to be excited and jump in joy when you're going through the pain. No, you don't have to. But you can maintain a thankful attitude to God. Remembering this, that He has not forgotten you. He's working on you. He's shaping you. He's molding you to become the person that God wants you to be. There is a purpose. There is a purpose. And therefore I can give thanks to God. I'm not done. But for today, I'm sorry, I have to finish here. But I'm not done with Joseph. There's so much more we've got to look at. For every one of us, there is a reason why we can complain. There, is a, there are issues where we can question God and blame Him. But would be unwise to do that. If you really say, I have faith in Jesus, I love Jesus, then believe what He said. All things work together. My plans for you are for good and not for evil. Our God is well able to deliver us from the fiery furnace. But King, just in case He chooses not to deliver us, I believe we fulfilled our purpose of, for life. Our purpose was to declare to the nations under you. Nebuchadnezzar was the most powerful king. Everyone, all the leaders, all the politicians, all the government officials, all the ministers from all different regions were there that day. And in front of everyone they said, our God. And if our God chooses not to deliver us, we're ready to be martyrs. What a testimony. What a testimony. May I encourage every one of you. Don't be discouraged in life. You might have failed several interviews. You might have been rejected in many places. You might have been badly talked about. People have spread evil rumors about you. They have spoken bad about your character. They don't love you. They hate you. Don't be surprised. But pastor, I can understand if the, the world is saying that, but my own family is doing this. Sure. Read your Bible. It was his own brothers that wanted to kill him. You're not special. History repeats itself. So don't be surprised when these things happen. But rejoice, the Lord has not left me. 
God is preparing you and me for something amazing. The, the world says, you're 60, retire. No, God never said that. You're 80, retire. No. Why would I retire? If you still put blood in my vessel, in my veins, it's giving me strength to walk about. He's enabling me to eat and be strong. Why would I retire? See, the government of God is not a wasteful government. If your time is up, he will say, come on up. He won't leave you here. He said, Moses, you've done well. Today you've got to take off. I don't, want, I don't want the devil to put any sickness on you, but I, you can take off. But you need a strip, air strip to fly, so get onto the mountain and take off. It's like paragliding. <laughs> go onto the top of the mountain and spread your hands. And then instead of going down, you're going to go up. <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God. I'm finding it difficult to close. You can tell. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Were you blessed today? Yes. Man, there's so much to talk, so much to teach you. And teach myself, you know, to be, not get discouraged with all the things that we face in life. And don't give up. Don't give up. You're special. Every one of you. He's, he said to every one of us, you're the apple of my eye. I've carved you on the palm of my hand. I know you by name, he says. Hallelujah. This is my God. Just because I'm going through a hard time does not mean God has forgotten my name. He said, I know you by name. And you are on my palm. Your mother that gave you suckling can forget you, but I will never forget you, he said. That's the God we worship. So just because I'm going through a hard time, just because I'm going through a challenging time, does not mean that he has forgotten me. He is saying, son, stay put. Do you realize, my son, that your faith is more precious than gold? And if gold has to be tested by fire, your faith will be tested. Stay put. In the fire, I will be with you. In the waters, I will be with you. Be strong. And be courageous. That's what he said to Joshua. He said, Joshua, as you face them, the one thing I need you to know is, be strong and be courageous. Yeah. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Lord, I pray that you would strengthen every one of us, especially those that are going through the valley experience right now, going through hard challenges in life, extremely difficult, painful experiences. Lord, speak to them. Comfort them, I pray, that they will know that God has not forgotten them, but that God is shaping them and molding them to become the better version of themselves. Father, I thank you. I pray God's blessing upon all of us today. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Now, let me say a few words before you bring your offering.